Hello, my name is Shannon Stewart. I'm part of the Education Department at the Cleveland History Center. I'm here today to share with you a story about great adventure. Um, the story actually focuses on the only sailboat we have in our collection, a little sailboat named Tinkerbell. And the hero of our story today is Robert Manry. Now, Robert was a Clevelander who in 1965 set sail across the Atlantic Ocean um, all by himself in this little tiny sailboat. Um, Robert actually grew up in Landor, India. Uh, Landor is way up in the Himalayan mountains. He, his parents were missionaries. In 1937, he came to the United States for college. And by the 1950s, he found himself here in Cleveland, Ohio. He actually became the copy editor for the Cleveland Plain Dealer. Now here in Cleveland, um, Robert began sailing again on Lake Erie. Uh, Robert always had a love of sailing and always hoped to have some kind of great big adventure on the ocean. Um, here in Cleveland, he was able to purchase his first secondhand sailboat. Um, he began fixing up the sailboat, rebuilding it little bit by little bit. Um, he practiced it sailing out on Lake Erie. And even though the sailboat was tiny, he had some great plans for it. In fact, the sailboat was so small, it's about 13 and a half feet long. Um, his daughter, Robin, decided to name the sailboat after her own tiny character, favorite character, and that's Tinkerbell. So armed with Tinkerbell, Robert decided to set sail across the Atlantic and live out his lifelong dream. Now, Robert left from, Cle from Massachusetts um, in 1965, June of 1965, and he sailed 3,200 miles across the Atlantic Ocean to England. Here on this chart, uh, this was the chart that uh, Robert actually drew himself, and you can see where he's drawn in his course and added notations about all the amazing and scary things that happened to him along the way. See, Robert was in the boat all by himself for over 78 days. That's about two and a half months completely alone. And while he was at sea, he had to worry about all sorts of things happening to him, um, from being washed overboard over a total of over six times um, to getting sick. All these things he had to deal with by himself. Uh, there is actually a story he tells in his journal where he was pulling up ropes from the ocean and didn't realize that they had the tentacles of this jellyfish attached. Um, this is a Portuguese man of war and it is very deadly. Um, so even just by touching the tentacles, Robert was actually um, fell ill uh, for quite some time and he had to take care of himself because there was no one else there. While being totally alone, Robert also knew he was gonna have to fight off the isolation of being on this tiny boat out to sea all by himself. So he had a couple of different tips and tricks to try. Um, first of all, he made sure he exercised regularly. And you can see there's not a lot of room to do that, um, but he would try stretching his arms up real high and then down to his toes. Uh, he would even do arm circles and do this over and over again, or even facial exercises where he'd open his eyes as wide as they could go, or his mouth as wide as it would go, and hold it for several seconds and then let it relax. And he would do these things over and over, anything to help keep his mind engaged. Um, he actually brought books with him as well. And again, there's not a lot of room for anything on this boat other than necessities like food and water. Uh, but he still packed some books because he knew they'd be really good to help him stave off this boredom, right? To, to keep from getting too lonely or scared at sea. Uh, he also was really strict about uh, having a, a daily routine. He would make breakfast, lunch, and dinner for himself from the dehydrated or canned foods that he packed, washing his dishes and utensils in the ocean um, after every meal and packing them away nicely. And then every day at noon, he would always take his sights and he would use a tool called a sextant, which is pictured here. And that lines up with the horizon or where the, the sea meets the sky and it helps angle uh, or measure the angles of the horizon to a celestial body like the sun. And this is the way that Robert could tell where he was going and make sure that he stayed on the right path to England. 
Now, all these little tips and tricks, um, keeping his mind sharp with reading and with exercise, with keeping his daily routine and making sure that he was using his sextant, um, did help deliver Robert safely to England. Um, he was met there by a great big crowd, including his family, which the Cleveland Plain dealer flew out to meet him. Uh, that's He's pictured in the lower corner here. He's waving to the crowd, and it's his wife that's right next to him. Um, and during his journey, during the 78 days at sea, his story had become international news. And there were about 50,000 people or so ready to welcome him back to um, England first. And then, of course, another big party when he came here home to Cleveland as well. So Robert's story has been inspiring people um, for years to dream big, um, even if it's just about a tiny boat. And we hope you found this story enjoyable. Um, I hope it inspires you to have a great adventure of your own. And when you're ready, you can come to the Cleveland History Center and explore our Tinkerbell exhibit in the Crawford Auto and Aviation uh, Museum. You might even be able to play on our miniature Tinkerbell, our life-size replica Tinkerbell. Um, but while you're at home, there's a lot of other ways that you can kind of connect to this story and explore it on your own at home. Um, a great way, I think, to talk about history is to visualize the story. So you can make your own little tiny sailboat using any kind of recycled goods that you have. This is an egg carton, a straw, and a piece of paper. Anything that you have at home, it's a great way to upcycle things before they get tossed back into the recycler um, and have some fun with it and help to illustrate your own story about Robert Manry. Um, if you have a little bit bigger box, remember the boat was 13 and a half feet, so you could even make your own Tinkerbell or a much smaller cabin where he would have actually slept and had that time to exercise in. But I think another really practical way to explore the story are these little origami boats. Um, they're tiny, but they're also usable. So once you fold this up, you can, you can fold it out of wax paper and it will be completely water resistant, or you can use regular printer paper like I have um, and run wax along the bottom side. That could be anything from a crayon, which will help a little bit, um, to dipping it into paraffin or even any type of sealer that you might have. Um, and remember, students, we ask that you talk to your parents and guardians before using any of these materials and they can help you figure out what might be the best one for you. Now, we're going to actually fold this little origami boat together first, um, and we do have the instructions available at the end of the, the video here and on our additional resources as well. So like I said, you can use any type of paper you want. I have just regular printer paper here, something that's going into the recycling pile. So we're going to use this today. First, I'm going to fold it in half. So really easily just take it corner to corner, right in half. Make really good creases so that you know it's going to stay together. Now here's my open flap down here. I'm going to fold it in half again this way thinking about a hamburger fold, making this rectangle here. This one I'm not too worried about because I am going to open it, but it's nice to have that really good crease because now I can kind of see it when I open my paper. I'll see that crease right there. And that's important because that's tell, that tells me where I'm going to fold my next corner to. So the top two corners, I'm going to fold in right down here, right straight along that crease. I'm just going to meet them in the middle, and I'm just going to run my edges down real fast out here. And it's going to end up making what looks like the roof of a house. So you can see here I have some nice edges going along the sides, and I have a little house. Next, I'm going to take this flap, just the top part of this flap down here, and fold that up over my triangles. So if I were to think of this like a hat instead of a house, I'd be folding up my brim. So you can see that it folds right up over top. And these little extra bits here, I'm actually going to fold around. I'm going to lock those down by making sure these folds are really tight. I'm back to having that nice pyramid at the top there. Okay, I'm going to do the exact same thing to this other little piece of paper on the back, turn it around and fold up that brim again and make it nice and tight. Here we go. Here's the first part where it gets a little bit tricky, but it's not too hard. I want to open this like a mouth. So I'm gonna keep my fingers on either side of that fold. 
I'm going to bring it the whole way open while I flatten it down. I'm going to flatten it into a square. There we go. So now I have a, my nice square. And I'm going to do the same, kind of the same thing I did. I'm going to take this first layer and I'm going to fold it up to make a triangle. Just like this. And I'll do the same to the second layer on the back. Fold it the opposite direction and make a triangle. So I should have a triangle in the middle with two flaps, two triangular flaps coming off of it, almost like a bird. Now, this is our final step, and this is where it gets a little difficult. So I'm going to show this to the camera here. I want you to keep your thumbs right in the center, right by on either side of your triangle. You're going to push down and pull apart really gently because you don't want to tear it. Although if you do tear it, that's okay. That's why we have tape. And I may need, you can see I'm using my fingers to help kind of form the sides of my boat while I'm doing this. I'm just going to pull out, you might even use your fingers to help form it that way. Pull out and in, and here's my boat. So you can kind of work with the edges, work with your the walls of your boat to make it as big or as little as you'd like. You can have the edges really deep or really thin, and you'll end up with a little boat that once you seal it, will actually be able to float um, in your bathtub or wherever you'd like to. So that's all the time that we have today. I hope that you enjoyed our story about Robert Manry um, and making our little boats to take home with you today. Uh, we do have a few other questions that I'd love for you to talk about at home. These are another great way to explore the story with your family a little bit. So first, um, think about what Robert might have seen uh, while he was on the Atlantic Ocean. What animals um, call the Atlantic Ocean home? You remember I showed you that uh, Portuguese uh, man of war, the jellyfish, but what else do you think he might have seen while he was on his boat for those 78 days? Um, and thinking about the way that he stayed fit um, and he stayed, you know, kind of keeping himself from boredom, uh, what can you do at home? What are some of the ways that you like to move or exercise at home? What if you only had a little space? Could you still do the same things? Or can you think of new ways to move um, that wouldn't take you all around the room? What could you do if you only had that small couple of feet to sit in. Um, and then finally, if you were going to go on a great adventure, where would you go? Um, what kind of adventure would you like to have? Would you do it in a boat? Would you take a car or a train? Would you walk? Um, do you want to go on a run through the woods? What type of big adventure is in your future? And do you want to go by yourself or would you like to take a friend or a family member with you? So thank you so much for joining us today. Again, my name is Shannon Stewart from the Cleveland History Center, and we'll look forward to talking about more Cleveland history stories with you uh, later. Thanks. Have a great day.